So let's start by discussing um, some basic routing algorithms. And again, this is based on Rob Rutenbar's wonderful course. And uh, if you want to know a bit more about it, I would go turn to Rob Rutenbar's course and, and his, um, his lecture slides. So let's start with the grid assumption. So despite the complexity of nano uh, nanoscaled routing, we're going to use a grid assumption and uh, the complexity will come in later. Some of it we won't touch on in this course. So we're going to assume that the whole grid, our whole chip, is a, uh, is a grid of regular squares. Okay, a legal wire, what it does, it takes a source, some sort of a gate where, let's say, uh, the pin of a driver, and we have a target, the uh, pin of the sink, and we want to connect somehow the source to the sink. A legal wire has a, a, a continuous connection. Okay, so we have to have some sort of a short circuit between the source and the sink uh, location. They, there may be obstacles in here, and obstacles are places that we cannot route through. Um, for example, an obstacle may be if we already used that grid cell, we can't use it again, or else we'll have a short circuit between two nets. Okay, um, we're going to use what we call Manhattan routing. Manhattan, as you know, has uh, vertical streets and horizontal streets and um, or vertical avenues and horizontal streets and this is uh, and we're going to always connect our um, nets in only vertical and horizontal routes and so we call that manhattan routing that will help us um, eliminate all kinds of problems that would would be to just give any any um, given direction and shape okay so uh, we're going to give names to this so up and down that's going to be called a northern and southern route and east and west are going to be um, right and left route. So with this basic grid assumption, we can come and develop what's called a maze router or a Lee router. Um, this is an algorithm uh, class that started in 1961 with a, a breakthrough paper by C.Y. Lee. Okay, so the strategy is to route one net at a time. So we're going to take all our million routes, we're going to select one of them and route it. For this certain net, we're going to find the best wiring path that it can have. Um, best will be the shortest, basically. Um, there is a problem here, though. Um, routing one net at a time means that we're going to have some sort of a heuristic that's going to choose which net we, we go for first. And we're going to run into, into big problems where an early wired net may block a, a later net. So for example, in this case here, we have these two blue nets which were routed first, and then we have this red net which cannot find a path to be routed through. Um, so if we would have ch chosen a different uh, uh, a, a different uh, um, order of routing, we wouldn't have had these blocks and we would have been able to route this uh, system. Okay, for example, if we would have taken the blue net and uh, we would have routed it over here, and this one we would have routed through there, then we could have routed this over here and they wouldn't have blocked each other. But because we chose to route these two first, we actually blocked the red one and we won't find a solution. But the sure thing is that... Um, uh, we won't be able to find an optimal route for each net because previous routes will block them. Okay, so this is a, a, a important heuristic. Um, the basic idea for this maze routing is, again, a three-step type of an algorithm. We do expand, then backtrace, and then clean up, and we'll go over these steps now. So the first step, again, is expand. So we have our grid here. We have our source in this box over here, and we have our target in this box over here. And we want to find the shortest possible path to get from the source to the target net with our assumptions, such as we can only put one net in each uh, grid block. It, co it costs us one, uh, one step to go from one grid block to another, and we have to use Manhattan routing so we can go horizontal and vertical. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start at the source, and we're going to give it the cost to route there. And in this case, we're starting with one. So it costs one um, routing step, routing unit, to um, put a, a, a wire there at the source. Then we're going to look for all the paths that are exactly one step away from it, and we can see that we get um, these. Uh, we can get to each one of these boxes within two steps. So one at the source, and then one at this net. Uh, one at the source, or one at this uh, grid box. And we're going to continue until we reach the target. So all those boxes take three steps to get to. All of these take four. Again, we can get to this guy by going one, two, three, four, and we reach that. Okay? Um, we can reach this guy, one, two, three, four, and so they have an equivalent kind of a weight. And we continue doing that until we eventually hit our target. And now we got to our target, and we can see that we can get to our target in six steps. Okay? Um, so that's what we call expansion. 
if we look at this, we have this type of a wave front. All of these uh, boxes, they take all these grid uh, spaces, they take exactly the same number of uh, routes to get to. So we can get to this guy within five steps, and this guy within five steps, or this guy within five steps, or this guy within five steps. And that looks kind of like how a wave goes, or if you took a rock and you threw it into a pond and how the... Um, uh, uh, how the uh, uh, wave goes and expands from where the rock hit. Okay, so we found that we can reach the target within six steps. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called backtrace and cleanup. So how do we know which uh, actual um, uh, routing path to take? So we do what's called backtrace. We're going to follow the path length backwards in descending order. So we start with this box that's numbered 6 over here, and we're going to look for one that's 5. We look, we found this one, so we mark it, and look for one that's 4 and 3 and 2 and 1. We could have done other things. We could have gone 6 to 5, to 4, to 3, to 2, to 1. We could have gone 6 to 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We could have gone 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All of those were legal shortest routes. Okay, so um, this uh, will mark the shortest path to the target. However, there may, may be many shortest paths. So optimization can be used to select the best one because we don't know which is the best of the shortest path. That will only know according to the in complete solution of our problem, which is very, very hard to, to do because we have so many options um, with, with, a, with a large design. Okay, but we selected one of them with some sort of heuristic. And now we have to do cleanup which says, okay, we've routed the net. What do we do? We can't route anything else inside um, these boxes because our assumption right now was we could only put one net in each uh, of these grid boxes. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark the whole thing, the whole net that we just routed, as an obstacle for the rest of the algorithm. So um, this black stuff means our next net cannot route through this blockage. So how do we deal with blockages. So now we've marked our first net that, um, that routed through here. And if we route something else through there, we're going to cause a short between two nets. So what do we do? This is our second source. This is our second target. And now we're just going to see that our um, algorithm will just go around these blockages. We mark it with a one at our source, just like before. We look and we see that we can get to these three boxes within two steps. And then we continue our expansion, and what we see is that amazingly, our algorithm will just go around the blockage. Okay, so we reached our target, and we did backtrace, and we see that we were able to route our second target within six grid steps by just going around the blockage. Again, this is not the shortest possible net there is, because for example, we could have gone one, two, three, four, but that would have gone through the blockage. And since we chose to route this one first, We've lost the ability to route it like that, but our shortest net within uh, at this point of time is to route it that way. Okay, so to summarize our, our the initial points of maze routing, we're going to start with expand. Expand is a breadth for its search, a BFS, that finds all the paths from the source to the target in path length order. Then we're going to backtrace, which means we're going to walk our shortest path back from the target to the source. And finally, we're going to clean up, which means we're going to mark our net as an obstacle and erase all these distance markers. These guys are irrelevant for the next step. So that's our expand, backtrace, cleanup basic of maze routing. Are we finished? Of course not. So um, as we know, we have a lot of these types of fan outs, right? So we have some sort of a gate that's driving several gates. And up till now, we just uh, discussed a point-to-point -point net. So this would be the start, uh, source, and here we'd have a bunch of targets. So let's just take a, a two-point net, uh, two-target, um, a, a fan out of two. And so we have this source over here, and we have two targets. That makes a three-point net. How do we deal with this type of a thing? Okay, so it's pretty straightforward, and our, our algorithm that we brought up till now deals with it very well. So we start with our regular maze routing algorithm to find the path to the nearest target. How do we do that? We put the one on our source and we start our wave propagation. Okay, and we go forward until we hit the target and then we backtrace and we're going to clean up. So we found that it took four steps to get to our first target. Okay, now what do we do? Well, remember that we're talking about an electrical wire. 
all of the points on this net that we routed now are going to be equipotential. So it doesn't matter if our second um, wire, it starts from here or it starts from there. They all are equipotential. All of the, 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 the electricity is at all of these places at the same time. The voltage is um, equivalent. Okay, so that means we can just mark all of these guys as new sources. Okay, so we'll mark all of our initial um, route as sources. Then we'll clean that up. Okay, that's already um, routed. That's part of our final net. And now we'll start again. So if they're all sources, we mark them all as ones. And now we can do our wave expansion um, from those guys all as ones to twos, to threes, to fours, and finally reach our target within five steps and do our backtrace and cleanup. And what we found is we can have this net that looks like this. And, um, and from this source, it took a lot more to get there, but we don't care about that source once we um, routed the first part. Okay, this does not guarantee the shortest path. That's uh, the shortest path there, algorithms for solving that. That's called a Steiner tree, but it gives a very good solution.